here's okay. Here is what my life looked like. I would wake up. Okay. I'd wake up at around 7:30. Too lazy to cook myself breakfast, so I'd go to McDonald's, buy myself a bacon egg McMuffin and two hash browns with an extra large coffee. I would then go to the office, sit there, eat it. I would grind away at creating some drawings and some schematics. And then I'd go out for lunch. I would probably go for either Vietnamese or Chinese, right? One of those two. Go back to the office, do the same thing. And then at five o'clock, happy hour. If it wasn't for getting laid off, I would have been stuck in that cycle. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Everything that I've ever done has always been because I've wanted to help people, or I've wanted to grow something. Um, I think if you, when you take a selfless approach to, to whatever you do, right, and you always try and better someone more than you're focused on yourself, like, that's kind of, that's kind of ass backwards, but, um, yeah, I just think that I think that you get more out of it. I'm not naive enough to say like I don't care about money. I do, but people's well-being and people's success is more important to me than my bank account. Uh, I would definitely say my biggest motivation is family. All right, um, watching how hard my dad worked uh, while all while I was a kid and then even growing up having two jobs to try and support us um, and then knowing what I'm capable of doing, right, is just a small P in, in that whole thing. But yeah, it's definitely how hard he worked and that's what pushes me to, to do better, to try and strive for more. Today, when I was in the library before all of this, there's a guy sitting behind me, he's like, the only way you get a job is if you have a 4.0 GPA. I am probably the worst student in the world, yet somehow I've managed to secure employment, to secure, well not even employment, but to secure cash flow in this sort of economy, right? And it, it's, it's horrible and I see it in high school students that come in for the first year of university and they all they've been taught is that school is the only option that they have, right? That you have to go to school to get a good job or to make money or to be successful, right? But there's so many other options, right? Like you shouldn't, that shouldn't, I, I don't know how it is in high school now, per se, I don't know what they teach people. I know when I went, if you weren't going to university out of high school, you were kind of an outcast. And that's a, that's a big problem. Because some people aren't students, and we're not meant to be students, they're hard workers. Right, but that doesn't mean they can't be successful. Please leave your message after the tone. After leaving a message, you can hang up, or press pound for more options. Hey Corey, it's Alan. We met at Rosso last week. Uh, I was just wondering if you wanted to grab a coffee sometime this week. Uh, if you're interested, give me a call back at <laughs> Alright, thanks buddy. Look forward to talking to you. Um, it was my lack of not... So I wasn't able to talk to people. Literally talking to whether it was a girl. It actually is it's mostly girls. Talking to girls was the scariest thing of my life. Like, I would much rather get hit by a car then have to have a talk conversation with the girl back in high school. And, and then I realized, okay, I'm obviously, like, I can't live my life like this forever. Um, so I came across this book and I started actually applying it to my life and it made a difference. But then I realized I can't, you know, you can't talk to everyone the way they teach you. It's kind of, like, and even, even nowadays, like when I think back to like things that they talked about in this book, like for example, they had this thing called negging, right? Which is like 
you, it's like a backhanded compliment essentially. So it's like, say that a, a girl had nice nails. You'd say, oh, like you have nice nails. They remind me of my grandmother's. Like, and I, I don't think things like that are really relevant anymore. I think the most important thing it did was it actually gave me the confidence to actually just be able to talk to people. And then that's where I got into this whole, like being fascinated by the way we communicate with one another, whether it's in digital form or it's in person. isn't a hot commodity like it used to be at least for at least for the time being in 2016 it's not a hot commodity and you see engineers that are getting laid off that are going and starting up their own companies now right it, that had nothing to do with engineering or anything right it's uh it's a pretty cool time i don't ever want to have a job or um or a career path that I am dreading Monday morning, right? As of right now, I have no problem working Saturday and Sunday. I have no problem going to school from from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. and then working from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m. That's that's no problem because I love what I do and I don't ever want that to change. I like to I like to try and schedule at least like one coffee meeting a day. Right, with someone, whether it's like someone that I have a past relationship or I'm trying to create a new relationship with. Um, and then school, school during the day. But I actually, I honestly get most of my like, like grinding type work. So writing essays or copywriting or coming up with marketing strategies. I do that in the evening. That's mm -hmm. typically when. Get my, get my creative juices flowing. I read this really great quote, I don't know who it was from, but they said, collaboration is the new competition, right? We, so many businesses follow this scarcity model where it's, I'm the only one that exists and no one else in my industry exists. So like a pizza place, for example, like they, they're the only pizza place out there. No one else knows, but thanks to the internet, if I Google pizza places near me, there's, 20 results of pizza places that I can go to. So I think it's I think it's embracing that, right? Embracing that there is other options and that it's no longer an I economy, but it's a we economy. And it's a sharing economy and we all we all help each other grow. No matter how high you get, stay humble. No matter how low you get, stay hopeful. What do you call a fish without an eye? I don't know. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm not making a documentary interview anymore. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done.